This is a demonstration of the Jackson Workbench, a case tool for JSP and JSD. It was developed since 2002 by Jim Newport and the staff at Keyword, Keyword Computer Services Limited in the UK. JSP stands for Jackson Structured Programming, a program design method developed by Michael Jackson in 1975. JSD stands for Jackson System Development, a system development method that was developed by Michael Jackson in collaboration with John Cameron in 1982. Both JSP and JST are language-independent design methods. In design, we're concerned with structure. Structure is the relation of parts to the whole. And uh, important in JSP are Jackson structure diagrams to depict the structure of programs. Later, Jackson called them tree diagrams. The components of any program are either elementary or composite. Elementary components are simply operations in some programming language, while composite components are the three control structures of structured programming, namely sequence, selection, and iteration. Let us now go and look at uh, a sequence. Uh, a sequence is defined as a composite component, A, that has two or more parts that are executed once, each part is executed once in order. So A here is a sequence of three parts. Now we can use our cursor uh, to bring up a hotspot here and add another component. Uh, now we have another part. We could, for example, delete also any node of our tree. Notice we don't have to draw anything. It's all done for us. In addition to sequence, we have a selection uh, which is defined as a composite component that has two or more parts, only one of which is selected and executed once. The little circle in the corner of each box indicates that there is a Boolean condition associated with each part, and if true, that part is selected. Finally, an iteration A is a composite component that has one part B that iterates. The little asterisk here is the operator for uh, iteration. Now I'm going to bring up the uh, Jackson Workbench. Uh, and in the Jackson Workbench, we're going to bring up the structure editor used in JSP. And we'll start off by trying to write a program, a design a program, that produces the following multiplication table. It's the upper left triangle of the tens table. There are ten rows, and in each row there are one or more elements. The number of elements never exceeds the row number. The first step in uh, JSP is to depict uh, the data structure of any inputs and outputs and to find correspondences between them. But in our case, uh, we'll call our structure mtable uh, and we give it a extension. Uh, we come up with uh, a root of our program structure mtable and let's change the label on it by double clicking and we'll call this a row and we know that mtable is an iteration of row, and in fact, each row is an iteration of element. Now, that is our basic program structure. The next step uh, in the method is to list and allocate uh, the options in the program that are needed to produce the output and to ask the question how often do these operations occur and in what component do they occur. We have the following nine operations needed. We need to define max, a constant that gives the number of rows that we're producing. We need to be able to initialize the row and the column to one to increment the row and to increment the column to compute an element as being a row times a column, to print out an element, 
to tab over to a new element in any row and to produce a new line so that we can produce our lines, uh, our rows on different lines. Let's now go ahead and allocate our operations to our program and I have clicked this bar uh, to bring up what's called the operations and the conditions bar and I'll start by uh, adding the two conditions that are needed to end our two iterations. The first condition is that the row must be less than or equal to max. We will iterate over row uh, as long as that condition is satisfied and we will let a column be less than or equal to row. That defines the condition that determines when we have completed a row. Now notice these two conditions show up in the condition bar and we can simply allocate those two conditions in the respective boxes. Now let's go ahead and add some of the operations. We have that max is equal to max is equal to 10. We'll add another, whoops, another operation. What's happened? Okay. We'll add another operation, namely that Rho is equal to 1. Now when we go to try to allocate these two operations we have a problem. We can't put them in front of Rho because mTable is an iteration and an iteration only has one component uh, and it won't let us do it. So what we can do is to add an intermediate uh, level here and we can label this box as generate rows. That's what this part of the tree does. And here we can go ahead and allocate the two operations as a, a sequence actually of two. And now mTable is a sequence consisting of these two elementary operations here followed by the component that generates the rows. So uh, we will continue now to allocate uh, the... When we have finished allocating all of the operations to the table, we get the resulting program structure. Next we need to put in a header that consists of the name of the main method uh, in the usual way and in the trailer we'll put the end bracket for that method and we also need to declare any variables in the program. At this point we're ready to generate the code uh, for the multiplication table. We will save the uh, code that's generated into uh, M into a, a, the Java directory of uh, our C drive. And if we go to our uh, editor here, we can open that up as mtable.java. And we get this uh, program, which we can then uh, try to compile. And we use the compiler here. The program has the extension Java and we see that it is compiled. We can go ahead and try to execute the program. We type in the name of the, uh, the Java command and we execute the class and hopefully here we'll produce the table. And we indeed, we do. So now that that is done, let's go back and take a look at some features of the Jackson Workbench. First, we can display different parts uh, of our uh, workbench uh, and we can also make things uh, either larger or much smaller. So a lot of flexibility in the display and we also have the ability to print out uh, uh, in HTML format uh, a structure summary that has complete documentation of our structure uh, right here and also of all of the operations that are involved. So uh, that about concludes this part of our demonstration and in the next part of the next video we will uh, demonstrate JSD.